Forsaken releases in less than a month, and the story will involve things like rogue barons, new enemies, new locations, a traitor, and much more. So today I thought it'd be fun to summarize the Awoken story up to this point and prepare you for Aldrin's madness. So whether you're a brand new player or a D1 Year 1 vet, let's uncover these mysteries together. With the arrival of the Traveler, humanity welcomed a new golden age of exploration throughout space. Human lifespan tripled, new colonies were built in our solar system, and it seemed that all of Earth's problems were cured. This was until the Traveler's ancient enemy arrived, something that we call the Collapse which would change our destiny forever. From that collapse, new protectors and races rose from those ashes. One of these was called the Awoken. Awoken were said to have been born during the collapse, descended from those who tried to flee its wrath. But something happened to them out there on the edge, and it changed them forever. Today we see many of the Awoken live within the distant reef, located around the asteroid belt, but others have returned to Earth, where their descendants now fight for the city. Although the Awoken have branched out and made homes for themselves wherever possible, the reef is still the main focal point. This area was once a gold mine for the Golden Age Industries, but if you look out there now, the belt is a haunted place where fallen pirates and Awoken patrols skirmish along the whispering carcasses of ancient machines. The Awoken are led by Queen Mara Saab and are very precise with their actions in the system. They choose what's best for the Awoken, even if that means hiding in the ruins of an abandoned asteroid belt, they're okay with that. Towards the beginning of Mara's reign as Queen of the Reef, her brother Aldrin intercepted a fallen transmission which concerned him. Now Aldrin couldn't really decipher this communication so he turned to the Tachyunes for some advice on what it meant. Here it appeared that the fallen were becoming bolder and growing their ranks in preparation for an all-out assault on humanity's last safe city. Now there was a big problem here, there was no interplanetary arrays, nothing to warn Earth of this attack if the fallen were able to commence it. The Awoken basically thought the only thing they could do is just sit at the reef and watch Earth fall. The fallen wolves then arrived from the Jovians. Their armies were hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions strong, a dark wave that washed over the reef, rushing toward Earth. As soon as the Awoken saw them, it was very clear. If these wolves did reach Earth, the city would fall for good. On the way to their path towards Earth, the wolves happened to stop and regroup at Ceres. Now this is a huge asteroid in the asteroid belt that lies between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So it's somewhere out there towards the reef, and this is where the wolves were going to regroup, but they had no idea that this is where the Awoken reside. So the Queen had a couple of options, first attack the House of Wolves at Ceres but reveal the location of the reef, or remain silent keeping the reef a secret but allowing the city to perish. At that moment, it seems she came to an answer. Her harbingers ripped into Ceres, destroying the asteroid and killing one of the wolves' cows in more than half of this house. The remaining wolves scattered, burrowing deep into the belt for cover. There, new claimants to the Kel ship quickly arose. Erixis, Wolf Baroness, Perixis, and finally Skolas, the rabbit. Now here it's worth noting what the Harbingers actually are. These are Awoken superweapons that can be communicated with and can cause massive damage, as seen at Ceres, nearly wiping out half of the Wolves' forces. The Harbingers can be controlled by either the Queen and also her Tekyunes. Now a Tekyun or Tech Witches are basically servants or advisors to Mara Sof. They are very mysterious and can be seen various times throughout both Destiny games. And it even appears we'll be fighting one in Forsaken, but we'll talk about that later. So the Awoken were successful in wiping out a big chunk of the wolves' forces, stopping them from reaching the Twilight Gap. But with this attack from the Queen and the Awoken, this spawned the Reef Wars. Now within this, uh, many different battles took place, but here's a basic summary. So the wolves broke out into a mini civil war, but Skolas came out on top and took over their leadership. From there, the wolves and the Awoken had some, you know, back and forth banter, different battles, destroying ships, taking out leaders, and so on. At some point, the Awoken partnered with the Nine, recruited Varix the Loyal, and Skolas was sent to the Prison of Elders in the end of this. So that's how Varix became the friendly fawn we see in the first game and helped us out with the expansion. Now, not sure what we'll see from him in Destiny 2, but it's really interesting with the Reef Wars because Skolas was the one who docked his arms, so he was like, let's freaking get rid of this guy, I'm gonna help you out. Another notable character to join the Awoken forces during the Reef Wars was Petra Venge. 
Petra grew up on Amethyst, where his sister led their local government. At some point, the Silent Fang invaded the area and wiped out her entire home. Petra was angry and was seeking revenge, so in this, she joined the queen to bring an end to these wolves and their madness. During the following battle, she was a ruthless warrior, but soon made a grave mistake when she called in an airstrike which killed three guardians. Marasov was disgusted with this action and demoted Petra, sending her to the last safe city where she became an emissary. Years later, she decided to contact Mara and pleaded for her forgiveness in an attempt to come back to the Reeve, which eventually worked. If we're going to find the Black Garden, we need to see the Awoken. Ah, yes, the Awoken. Out there wavering between the light and the dark. A side should always be taken, little light. Even if it's the wrong side. The first contact with the Guardians came in Destiny 1's campaign when we needed instructions on how to find the Black Garden. Now as we can see from the cutscene, Aldrin clearly didn't want any part in this, but his sister convinced him that we were valuable and could repay them in the future. We'll make you a key. How's that? All we need is the head of a Vex Gatelord. A uh, Gatelord? Uh, we... Why do you want a Vex head? Oh. We don't, and I doubt we'll get one either. After the Reef Wars, Mar became the Kel or leader of the House of Wolves who we see in the first cutscene that we just played. They were pretty loyal to her and worked together until they didn't, which introduces the House of Wolves expansion. Open the Reef to the Guardians. Offer the riches of our realm as bounty for these traitors. Let the hunt begin. Here, Skolas, who escaped the grasp of the Nine, orchestrated an assassination attempt on the Queen of the Reef. This opened up the Reef to the Guardians as Mara needed help stopping this threat once and for all. After Skolas was slain and the war was over, the queen quickly shifted her gaze towards the next threat. Calling Eris Morn and Osiris to her side to discuss, the queen prepared a master plan to wipe out the hive god known as the Taken King. Here in 2015's The Taken King prologue, we see the Awoken fleet meeting in a battle with Oryx's Dreadnought and forces. The Queen once again deployed her Harbingers in an attempt to plant them into the Dreadnought, which was part of her ultimate plan. This as we see didn't do much, but I believe it was supposed to be like that. Oryx then wipes out most of the fleet, Mara fades out of consciousness, Aldrin crash lands on Mars, and the Awoken are completely wiped out. Many Grimoire cards do hint towards Mara's fate, which points that she is still out there and alive, and apparently Aldrin wants to find her. In one of my recent videos, we discussed Mara's fate, which was possibly revealed in some new Forsaken armor taps. So if you want to learn what happened to Mara after this Taken King cutscene, click that video down below. But after awaking from his crash ship on the surface of Mars, Aldrin was greeted by his spy devices called the Crows, and said that something was missing and he needed to find it. It's a crash ship that bears some fallen insignia. Let me check the logs, see if I can figure out where it came from. It belonged to Prince Aldrin. What is it doing on Mars? Do you think he knows about Rasputin? There's a record here. Sighting. Awoken ship. Martian airspace. Contact with fallen. Nothing after that. Anomaly in the reef. But I thought... Nope. I don't have time for that right now. Aldrin then had some contact with some fallen forces and either became the Kel for the Kings or is assisting in their leadership. Now this is still a little bit foggy to me with all the new Forsaken lore because we know Aldrin leads a Scorn and that's the main enemy but maybe the Kings thing is still planned. This brings us up to the events of Forsaken. Aldrin Sov leads an undead army known as the Scorn in search for something in the Dreaming City. Whether his ultimate goal is to find Mara or stop whatever resides in the Tangled Shore, we know he is determined to complete this task, even if it means ending innocent lives in the process. Anyway Guardians, I hope you enjoyed this roundup of the Awoken story. 
Now there is tons more tiny details within there that you can read up on, but this is a pretty good starting point for those of you who want to know what's going on before the DLC comes out September 4th. If you would like to become a voice actor for my game, there's still some parts available and the link for that is down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, my name's Evade and I'll catch you guardians in the next one.